is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, simulating progress giving birth to evolution. RESTful APIs are becoming more common in the networking world. Most of the APIs in the network infrastructure are HTTP based REST APIs. For this client-server communication, HTTP is being used. As we are performing using URL, just as we do browsing the internet. So in the basic terms, when we browse through a website, HTTP gets are performed. So when we complete a web form and click submit, an HTTP post is being done. So in context of working with network device, and also depending on the device, you would get and retrieve configuration data. And when you make changes, you would post to make configuration change. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and in today's video, we'll discuss about REST, the Representational State Transfer API. So REST is a, REST is a set of formal and informal guide that provides constraints to improve communication between systems. REST is not a protocol, but it's an architectural style. The popularity of REST is due to its simplicity and it uses HTTP protocol. Because it uses HTTP, we need to install libraries or additional softwares, making it simple to implement. Because REST APIs can handle multiple types of requests and return different data formats, XML, JSON, YAML, it makes very flexible. Think of a data format as a way to structure data that can be ready for multiple systems. The simplicity and the flexibility allows you to build an application that meets your need or your customer need. It provides constraints to improve the communication between the system. The rest describes six constraints that must be met if an interface is going to be considered restful. Each successful constraint builds on the top of the previous one. The client and the server, the idea of the client and server is that client and server should be separate from each other. This allows you to make changes to your application without impacting the resource of the device. At the same time, we should modify the resource without affecting my application. The stateless constraint means that the request can be made independently of one another. For this to work, one request must contain all the data necessary to be successful. Because REST APIs are stateless, it could increase the device overhead by handling many incoming requests of the outgoing responses. To help elevate this problem, REST APIs are designed so that the data can be cacheable. Caching is performed at the clients. The uniform interface is a common language for any client to communicate with a REST API. The uniform interface constraint states that the requests and response must follow a common way to formatting their message, for example, JSON. The layer system constraint requires that the message always be processed regardless of the number of layers between them. Code on demand is the last constraint that only one that is optional. Code on demand allows you to create more intelligent application because it will enable you to transmit code over the APIs to use within the application. But out of the six constraints, three of the constraints helps in understanding REST within the network device API content. So client server architecture, stateless and uniform interface. Individual resources within an API are identified in a HTTP request. REST APIs, there are three components that you need to understand. The client, the endpoint and the resource. The client could be an application running on a computer. This application could be a built-in Python script or you can say a GUI based Postman or a Linux based curl. The endpoint could be a network device such as router, switches, we will have servers, we will have SD-WAN devices or other devices as well. The resources in the data, you can refer that what you want from the device to get it. So how does the client communicate with the server? So this is based on HTTP request response. The REST API works in a request response fashion. The client makes a request to the endpoint to either retrieve or make some configurational changes. The endpoint then responds to the request with a response. When the client makes a request at the endpoint, there is a certain information that is required. For example, you will need an HTTP method and that method will define what kind of operation you are performing with the endpoint. For example, you need some data from the endpoint. The get method which has been used to retrieving the client details 
information from the endpoint side. So a response generally consists of a status code which let you know if your request was processed correctly or failed. If you also include a header with the information about the body content type and data if you are retrieving certain information. So response code 200 which tells you that the request was processed. The best way to think of a response code is to think about accessing website on the internet. If there is some error happened, then the response code is 404 page not found. So the error 404 means that resource could not be found. So there are different error codes, but for now with 200 range, everything is okay. If it starts with 400 range, it will be a client side problem. And if it is begins with 500 range, then it's a server side problem. So the header was a content type of application plus JSON, which means that the data in the body will be a JSON format and the body contains the information for client. This information above is just a small sample of what is being written from a endpoint side. So in order to do an operation in with REST API, whether you want to retrieve data, whether we want to put some data, we have some methods. Get method is to use to retrieve a specific resources or a collection of resources. The data is returned either in the XML or a JSON format and which is considered to be as idempotent. So idempotent means that if you make multiple requests using the same method on the same resource, it will not change the resource multiple times. Therefore, you can use the get method to retrieve the same resources multiple times, but it will not going to change. The next one is post to create a new risk to create a new risk it is not considered item potent and the request is processed then it will return with a status code of two if you want to remove specific information then we have a delete is not an item potent if the resource is removed successfully you will receive a status code of 200 in the response if you want to replace specific information then we will use the put method it is not perform a partial update will completely remove the information doing an overwrite. Put is considered to be an item potent and will return a status code of 200 if the request is processed correctly. Patch is similar in some way to put because patch modifies the capabilities of a request. But the difference between put and patch is that patch sends a request containing only the changes to the resource and not a complete update resource. So you can consider as put do a override operation, patch do a merge operation. So when a HTTP method is used, a certain response code is being written depending on the outcome. For example, when a client successfully retrieves a resources with the get method, the client will receive a status code. That means the request succeeded. The ITF develop the HTTP response codes. The response codes are useful when you are troubleshooting because they provide the particular information regarding the error on the client side or in the server side. For example, if client receives a status code of 400, that means you will troubleshoot at the server side or the client side. So knowing this code, it will be easier that where to start the troubleshooting process. The range of 100 is an informational course. Range of 200 is what success. Range of 300 is redirection. Range of 400 is client error. Range of 500 is server error. So now, if you got a status code of 400, you will be troubleshooting at the client side. If you are getting a range of 500 error code, then you will be troubleshooting at the server. RESTful APIs are becoming more common in the networking world. Most of these APIs in the network infrastructures are HTTP based RESTful APIs. Using REST, it used the transport as HTTP. So it used certain HTTP verbs. REST supports the create, read, update, and delete operation. CRUD operation refers to the four major functions that are implemented in the database application. These operations are how you will work with the network APIs to create an object. For example, if we want to create loopback interface, so what we can do, we will do a create operation. So in this case, we will do a post put patch operation so that we will be able to create it. Now, if I want to do a retrieve operation, particularly we want to get a configuration or we want to get a operational data, then we will have a read operation. 
in the read operation what we do is we do a use get method to get the inform retrieve the information from the endpoints using the update object we can perform given changes in the endpoints similarly if you want to delete remove certain configuration then we will do a http delete method and then perform the operation it is important to understand that not all apis that use http for transport are considered rest when our api does not conform to restful definitions it is considered as non rest regardless of the transport protocol for example in a restful network device apis configuration changes would never occur during the http get because this operation is dedicatedly used for data retrieval however http based systems that do not follow restful principles could use the same method for every api calls so the api not following the restful principles by retrieving data or making a configuration change using the post method so in the networking industry non restful apis are most commonly been seen as an api that implement cli commands which means that the api sends a command to the device instead of sending a structured data so we have several tools which consumes rest api the first one is basically this tool has been a very easy gui to consume the rest api this is what we refer to as postman if we are using python so python request module will be will be used to do the rest api http requests and if we are using a linux command line then we will use curl next video we'll discuss about each of these tools and we'll see that how to perform the operations and how to use those method to do any kind of operation with the endpoints thank you for watching this video